South Dakota is known for being one of the most frigid states in the entire country, so due to that fact, usually during the winter time we are talking about snow or big time arctic blasts. It has never been that we have been talking about tornadoes, until today. Today, about an hour ago at the time of filming, the first ever tornado in February for South Dakota history touched down near the city of Watertown, and in this video we're going to be explaining why, what happened, and could this happen again. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Now this incredible video of the tornado comes from Alex Russell here, big storm chaser in the Northern Plains. And as we can see, this was a very, very tiny little rope tornado that kind of tickled the ground there for a couple of minutes straight. This is pretty good footage of it, I'm not going to lie, it is very close range, so this is quite dangerous. Only do this if you're a professional, do not try this at home. But this was obviously a very interesting tornado, you can barely even see the air funnel associated with it there. Um, and Overall, I mean, this was potentially one of the weakest tornadoes to ever touch down. I mean, we don't see any visibility issues. We don't see any sort of debris being picked up by this thing. There's not even any signs of any gusty winds around this uh, tornado here associated with it. Now, we can see that the dust cloud here does become quite large for a brief period of time, but that did not last for very long whatsoever, and that's mainly just dust. Again, these are some of the most interesting pictures of this tornado here. Again, all captured by Alex Russell. Make sure to go check them out. Uh, these are honestly some of the craziest pictures considering the time of year and the location that it's taking place in. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at Radar Omega here, we can see that this was a supercell progressing through northern sections of South Dakota and even southern North Dakota as early as lunchtime today. Now, this cell continued to push off to the south and the east, bringing some gusty winds and heavy rain towards areas like Aberdeen, as well as other areas along Highway 12 and it continued to push southeastward, growing quite a spectacular hail core and several strikes of lightning as well across eastern South Dakota, which also there are some amazing captures of right now on social media by Alex Russell. Now, it's about this time where the supercell approaches the Watertown region, about 3.30, where the tornado begins to touch down. If we take a look at things here, we bring this back from the Sioux Falls radar, we can see that this supercell here did eventually make its way down further to the southeast. Again, this was near Clear Lake and Castle. Woods, South Dakota. Estimating this scan right here is probably a good guess for where the tornado touched down just based off of the time that the video was submitted and uh, based off of peak velocities with this supercell, which by the way, actually did get somewhat impressive for a brief period of time there. If we take a look at things, we can see that we did have a very clear velocity couplet as this entered Minnesota here, and it was actually quite intense there as it got to the southwest of Canby, Minnesota, but we're estimating that it touched down somewhere near Brant, South Dakota. Now, this is quite impressive because if this were just a couple miles further to the east, this would have been a Minnesota tornado. Now, the interesting thing about that is that still would have been the first tornado in Minnesota in February. This does not happen anywhere in the upper Midwest or the northern plains. Wisconsin has only had two February tornadoes, and you may remember those both happened just last year in February, right? Two February tornadoes, I should say. So, pretty crazy stuff to see, and again, this supercell is still ongoing, approaching the town of Marshall, Minnesota, and we will do some live severe weather coverage if things do kick off enough, but at this point, it's looking like this is mostly just going to be a windbag and a heavy rain event for the following areas. Now, for anybody wondering how the heck this happened, we actually did have a decent bit of wind shear out here, even in just the first kilometer of the atmosphere in sections of South Dakota and Minnesota. Obviously, Cape values were close to zero, but that uh, wind shear did carry very heavily, and we still did have a few hundred joules per kilogram at Cape, just barely enough to spin up a brief tornado there for a couple of minutes, and the significant tornado parameter values actually are there as well. The ARRR has been hinting at this being a potential since yesterday, which is quite crazy, so honestly, good for the ARRR model. Now, as we see here on the reflectivity, these storms are expected to continue to track across sections of southern Minnesota over the next couple of hours and eventually make their way into areas like southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois where more gusty winds and even maybe a brief spin-up tornado could be possible based off of what we've already seen. And to me, the funniest thing about this event is that we had two marginal risks of severe weather today, one of them even being tornado-driven down here in southern Florida. This mode of storms completely flopped. The coolest thing that we've seen is a big-time water spout far off the coast, and we also had another marginal risk back up here in the Pacific Northwest and absolutely nothing happened with this one other than some rain and some lightning.
Now, the difference between this very brief little tornado slash land spout that we had in South Dakota and the tornado that we previously mentioned last year in the Wisconsin region is the Wisconsin tornado devastated homes and communities across the southern portion of the state. This is a large metal outbuilding destroyed at high end EF2 intensity near Evansville, Wisconsin. And this is only one of the several times that this happened with that tornado. Again, our South Dakota tornado tornado, as far as we are aware, didn't even damage any trees. So compared to last year, while we were dealing with this in Wisconsin, we are in nowhere as near of a sticky situation. That tornado was longer tracking, it was stronger, it was in a more populated area than this South Dakota tornado ever could have been. Now, one last thing here before we finish off this video, I'd like to note that we are going to have the potential to see a severe weather threat start to ramp up across southern portions of the United States over the next week or so. As we can see here on the GFS model, we are going to be expecting a couple more severe weather events that are likely going to be on the more minor side of things across sections of the Ohio Valley sometime soon, but it's around the 3rd and the 4th of March that we start to see a legitimate signal for a severe weather threat pick up across sections of the central and southern plains. Now, this setup is not going to be anywhere near enough to produce strong tornadoes or anything like that, as we're only going to have dew points into the 50s and limited wind shear. However, we are still going to be talking about the threat for widespread damaging winds, isolated hail, and tornadoes as well. So if you are across sections of Dixie Alley or the Southern Plains, make sure to be on the lookout here over the next couple of weeks or so as severe weather looks to make a return this year finally as we enter the month of March. It has been a very slow start to the year, but it does look like things could pick up relatively soon based off of trends from all of the latest model runs. But yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today, so if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe. We do severe weather forecasting and coverage streams every day for areas all across the country, whether it's winter storms, tornadoes, or hurricanes, we've got you covered. Now, we have taken a little break over the past week or so just because the weather has been so, so dead, but as I just mentioned, it looks like things are going to start to ramp up again as we enter the month of March, and we just had a tornado in South Dakota in the winter, so obviously 2025 is going to be a crazy year, so if you want to have a way to get weather alerts for your area at all times, make sure to click that subscribe button down below, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.